Hello everyone, hope you are good and be happy always. Once again, welcome to Chachi's Academy and today we will discuss the steps in demand forecasting and the methods that are commonly used for demand forecasting by producers all over the world. Okay, first of all, we need to understand who should do demand forecasting and why they should go for demand forecasting. Who should do? People who are producing on a very large scale, who are catering to national and international brands or who are just supplying huge amount of products to different markets, they should necessarily do demand forecasting because if they don't do, they will be losing millions and millions of rupees in their production or maybe they may incur losses and just shut down their operations as well because if they do not pay heed to what is being demanded in markets then they won't be able to understand how they should allocate their funds how should they manage their production how much inventory they need to keep so demand forecasting is at most important for producers who are producing at a very large scale then Small producers who are producing just for uh, meeting the demand for small colonies or small areas or villages or small regional places, they don't necessarily need to go for demand forecasting because what they can do, just they can uh, just go through their past data, how much uh, they have sold in past months or one year at most and then they can refer to that data and they can estimate they can expect that future trend will also be the same or they should study some market and go through some newspapers what will be the demand and they can gain some knowledge through experience just for example say that during some uh, uh, parts of some months of year there is high demand take for example in during winters when christmas falls when new year is there in every nation in every nation there is high demand. In India, uh, if, they, if we take particularly in India, then during festive season, during Diwali, even Amazon launches its big billion sale. Flipkart launches its sale and different shops, every, every producer, every shopkeeper launches sale or organizes sale during those months during, uh, uh, nearby Diwali. Why? Because Diwali is a very big festival in India and most of the people, almost everyone in India makes purchases and that time, uh, um, high discounts are offered to consumers and new offers the end number of offers are available to consumers why because sales are all time high demand is all time high over there so by experience also producers can learn that at what point part of year in during which months demand will be high and uh, at what points or what places demand is really high take for example uh, nearby colleges and schools during school hours demand is really high when uh, people uh, go to schools or get out of the school normally children go for parties or for snacking or stationary shops are also there and in those shops demand is really high but if you have a stationary shop that is not located nearby a school your demands can be really low uh, uh, another example can be your sh medical stores nearby your hospitals when um, doctors prescribe medicines then patients or uh, people normally generally go to those medical stores and purchase medicines that that means that you by experience can gain also uh, can also gain knowledge for your um, sales in future that can happen and th there is no need for demand forecasting for everyone but for bigger companies it is the first requirement they should go through demand forecasting because see you need to understand who should do demand forecasting because demand forecasting is very expensive process it involves a lot of money a lot of energy and very um, lengthy time process process is very also, also very lengthy so you need to do demand forecasting only when you require it necessary okay so let's start with the topic here steps in demand forecasting first step is clarity of objective First of all, you should know that what is your aim through demand forecasting, what you intend to gain from demand forecasting, what is the basic aim. Okay, so first is allocation of funds. See, funds are all are most important, money is at most important for managing any type of business. And if you don't allocate it or distribute it uh, uh, dif among different users nicely or judiciously, thoughtfully then you are bound to incur losses in that business so you always need to know that at what amount you should spend on raw material what amount of salary you should be paying to your labor and what is the amount you should spend on management of resources or developing in inventory or anything like that transportation costs or everything that you go through in your business okay 
Uh, take for example, uh, my father was in coal India and, and uh, at that time, uh, during 90s, there were some machines that were imported from Japan and Russia. Then technicians from uh, Japan and Russia accompanied those machines, they assembled those machines in India, in coal India, and then they just uh, taught our uh, fathers and whatever people were there to operate them. So, those people were paid charges for that and that was the whole amount was um, borne by coal india so what is the here that you need to sometimes uh, uh, get services of uh, highly skilled intellectuals or highly skilled labor to get your work done in that case you need to invest heavily on your labor and in some cases the raw material is very expensive take for example uh, if you have a jewelry production or jewelry designing and production unit. So in that case, your raw material, that is diamond is the most expensive item over there. So you have to invest heavily on diamonds. So if that is the case, you need to keep in mind. Then, sales promotion. What is your target for your sales? If you are catering to regional market, then the sales may be lesser. You are catering to a smaller market. That means your market is small. Now that uh, There will be a very small demand for your product commodity. But if you are going for a state level market or if you are going for national level or international level market then your sales will vary and methods of demand forecasting will also vary and the cost of demand forecasting accuracy of demand forecasting will also vary and people who will be doing your demand forecasting will also vary why because high end professionals very high intellectuals will be required to uh, forecast your demand and international agencies will be required to forecast your demand then then we have pricing strategy. What will be the pricing if you are operating in different markets? Take for example, monopoly market and monopolistic market. Monopoly market is a market where there is only one seller. That means if you are only one seller of any commodity, that means you can charge any price. But you have to just keep in mind that how much amount you have to sell in market. Take for example, in India, Indian Railways has monopoly over railway routes that means railway services are fully owned by your um, Indian railways that means it can vary its charges for different categories of uh, sleeper class or your AC coaches etc uh, as per its will and there's no competition for it but in monopolistic market just like it happens in, in the case of FMCG commodities like fast moving consumer goods like beverages or just like soaps, toiletries etc there you have hell lot of competition and you need to keep a very keen eye on the market and the pricing of other people as well so you won't be able to freely charge prices whatever you want to uh, for your commodities so in that case you need to invest heavily in your demand forecasting if you are producing any commodity that is sold at national and international markets then inventory how much inventory you need to have, how much stocks you need to have for future sales, that also can be done through demand forecasting. It's also needed if your objective is an inventory development or stock uh, development, that you need to see the season. Just like I have explained in uh, India, you have New Year, uh, heavy sales are uh, there in New Year, that means demand is all time high during marriage season in India, in festive season. Marriage season normally falls in winters nearby Diwali and up till your February, March and thereafter in June, July as well. Marriages happen in India. Normally in Hindus it happens and uh, 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 among Christians and among Muslims marriages uh, happen. All around here and uh, I don't know much. If I speak something wrong, please forgive me for that. And festive season and during Diwali, during Eid, during the Shara, heavy sales are organized. So you can see the special season and how much stock you need to have. Take for example, if you have certain type of commodity, uh, during Raksha Bandh in India, Rakhis, uh, uh, just like friendship band is there, that is a band that is uh, just tied by their sisters on the wrist of their brothers. So Raksha Bandh is there in India. So during Raksha Bandh, you can see Rakhis are sold all over India before 10 to 15 days or before one month. Okay, and during first day, during uh, during uh, the previous day, on the eve of Raksha Bandh, heavy demand of rakhis can be seen in india in the same case during valentine's day in india in diwali season sale of everything our demand for everything is really very high then product selection demand forecasting is done for both the types of commodity that is consumer goods and capital goods what are consumer goods consumer goods are the goods just like this blazer just like watches just like table lamps just like chairs cameras 
your uh, water bottles, your utensils, your laptops, phones, everything is a consumer good. That means, what is a consumer good? A commodity that is ready to be sold in the market, which we normally can go and buy from shops in the market, that is your consumer good. Or precisely a good that is consumed by consumer or purchased by consumer is consumer good. Okay. So, commodities that we normally come across in our markets that we purchase, we normal consumers purchase, these are consumer goods. But what are capital goods? Capital goods are those goods which are uh, just demanded by producers to produce other commodities. For example, robots and machines which are used in production of cars or in production of bottles or in production of cameras, suitcases, almiras, chairs, tables, etc. These are intermediate goods or capital goods normally. So these goods are uh, demanded by producers. So demand forecasting can be done for both the commodities produced uh, and capital goods that are the producers goods and consumer goods. That selection of method. Before selecting method for demand forecasting, we need to understand three points. Okay, three areas. Area of investigation. That means what you intend to do from your demand forecasting. You are Wine for say a pricing strategy, you are just focusing on your pricing strategy and what price you should keep that you should go for demand forecasting for the different method. Then sales promotion, um, if your target is sales promotion or marketing of a commodity, advertisement, providing uh, just airing advertisement on different media just like print media, your uh, digital media etc. Then you can go for different type of method for demand forecasting. Then people can talk. If you can get answers from people, if you can get responses from normal consumers, then your method would be different and otherwise if you can't get, then your method can be different. Take for example, people always do not communicate freely in front of strangers. Take for example, if I smoke and drink, but if you ask me directly that ma'am, do you smoke? How many cigarettes do you smoke or anything like that that I would outrightly say no. I don't smoke because it's not socially acceptable for women in India to smoke. Anyway, I don't drink or smoke but still right now also you can't judge that whether I smoke or drink. So these are type of questions which won't be answered directly. But for certain type of questions or uh, then for certain type of questions like what is your income? If you're telling your income to your friend then you will increase your income by default. Uh, suppose a person is earning only 1 lakh or 1.5 lakh, they may say 2.5 lakh or 3 lakhs also. If a person is earning 10,000, then they can say 20,000, anything like that. But if any official from income tax department inquires about your income, then you will certainly lower down the limit that you are earning. You may say, if you are earning 1 lakh, you can say 50. Uh, 50,000, I'm earning 50,000. If you are earning 2 lakhs, then you will definitely say 1 lakh rupees. So that is the case with answers. So whether you can get direct responses from people or not, that also is a criteria for selecting up um, that is method for demand forecasting. Then, now third and most important one is level of accuracy. See, if you are dealing in very expensive commodities, then level of uh, accuracy need to be very high for demand forecasting. For take for example, if you are dealing in diamonds, luxury brands paintings of very famous uh, painters then you, to, you need to have very high accuracy level why because they are expensive commodities even if you uh, just produce two or three units of that extra uh, extra units of that commodity then you will incur losses if that is not sold in market so you need to have very high accuracy levels in case of diamond jewelry your paintings luxury brands high-end brands and high-end cars but if you are dealing in very small, that means low price commodities, then your level of accuracy can vary from, um, that means it can vary from 10 to 20% or nearly 50% as well. It doesn't make much difference because take for example, I took example of Rakhi in India. Rakhi is that there is a friendship bed like thing. So when they are manufactured in extra amount or in bulk and if they are uh, in stock or you have unsold stock, then you can keep it for next year and you can sell them next year. But still, uh, demand forecasting is important. Why? Because if you have unsold stock, then you have to bear the cost of keeping those commodities in some storage house, etc. So demand forecasting, of course, is important for them. But still, for expensive commodities, level of accuracy needs to be very high. Then, methods. Now comes the methods. Normally, we have two types of methods for demand forecasting. Some are commonly used methods, which are commonly used by 
all the demand forecasters which are um, throughout the world and second are statistical method they require very high level of proficiency among the professionals who are using these methods these are normally mathematical graphical methods and these are methods which are normally used by people throughout the world okay so first is survey of buyers intention here you can see survey of buyers buyers that means consumers who are consuming commodity that means buyers who are about to say uh, about to buy a commodity because consumer is king so a king who is the king consumer is king then a king can tell you better that what he will be buying in coming months or in coming year so if you have any type of commodity just like fmcg commodities or just like cars uh, just like bikes or refrigerators or anything like that if you want to do survey for that then you can directly contact your consumers and you can get inferences from them and you can just tabulate the data and draw interpretations from them okay then we have collective opinion method so this was survey of buyers and here we have survey of sellers sales people uh, normally buyers come in direct contact with sellers or the salesman okay so if i am a salesman in any uh, garment uh, outlet or of any branded show uh, branded commodity then i can definitely tell what of consumers come to me and what are their demands what are the preferences so i'll be the best person to interact with when it comes to collective opinion method that means collectively all the inferences all the responses of sales person sales person are taken and then this method is used then we have the expert opinion method in this method experts are contacted they are asked questions regarding the general tendencies of economy and the demand trends and then you draw inferences from those answers and then you forecasting this method would be explained in detail in another video here we are not discussing in detail then business parameters there are certain variables in your economy those tell you what would be the tendency or what would be the trend of demand in coming future take for example if people lose their jobs can you tell that demand would be high no because when people lose their jobs when they are not employed they will have lesser amount of income or they will not have income at all okay so they will not spend in markets and that case demand will be dampened and people you won't be able to sell much in your markets then during covid 19 what happened people lost their jobs and demand for most of the commodities fell down that's like cars houses and luxury brand items all fell only demand for medicines increased for otherwise for all items it normally decreased during covid 19 then there are uh, statistical methods here statistical methods are trend projection method graphical method least square method control experiment method and study of general economic environment methods so these methods would be explained in detail in your other videos why because they can't be explained here and they require some mathematical background or mathematical understanding of topics and i will be explaining them um, two videos in each video uh, sorry two topics in each video and keep a tab on my videos so here we have explained what are the steps you need to keep in mind when you do demand forecasting who should do demand forecasting uh, what are the objectives of demand forecasting and what uh, topics or what points you should keep in mind while selecting methods for demand forecasting and we will explain these methods of demand forecasting all nine methods common and statistical methods in different videos so keep in touch keep watching our videos thanks for liking and subscribing my videos and god bless